讨论了。So we talk about free transfer is a pair of transformation from time to frequency and frequency back to time. So this is just a review that we have learned last time. Uh, this is one example. The time signal free transfer is seen, right? And we know the magnitude is even symmetric. And we talk about Boston Fell theorem. So calculate a uh, given signal's energy can be done in time, can be also done in frequency domain if you know free transfer of your zero. Okay, then we talk about several important signals, we transform, uh, we show examples, right? Prove some of them, and uh, there is a table, right? There is a table. If you are doing homework or you this, then just check the textbook. Right here we have the different tables. This slide will be the topics table. So those two tables are very important. You may want to use them a lot. Okay, for periodical signal, you may also define the free transport based on free series. Okay, then we talk about free transport. Last time we talked about six signals. Then we talk about linear table, a uh, complex conjugate. We talk about symmetry to evitate uh, scaling, time shifting. We prove that one, yeah? and uh, we show one example by using time shift linearly two properties and one pair of free transform to solve the problem. <coughs> So try to do the same thing, right, in your home, in your business exams. Uh, those pairs are available, right? Those properties, combine those properties, you can solve many, many new signals uh, for your transform. Last time, we also talked about a very important property called frequency <coughs> shift or amplitude modulation. Right, you try to prove by yourself. So very important, we can move our signal spectra to any frequency we are interested. So this is right, the concept of modulation. modulation. Okay, now, new stuff. Differentiation and uh, integration. So differentiation in time. Free transform. We still have the same free transform, but J omega time your free transform will get the new signals free transform. And uh, on the other hand, right, if we do integral, the new signals free transform will be V omega divided by J omega, right? And this is the initial value. Initial response rate into it from minus infinity to t. So differentiation relative, we have j omega time the signal of the transform, right? Integration we have signal free transform divided by j omega. So differentiation and integration. Two new objects, two new properties. Um, properties. Uh, this example you can also find from your textbook. Three point six point four point four. So we have a signal.
Okay, we have a single note. This one looks like a triangle, right? But cut, the top was cut. Problem. What will be this one? Free transfer. Okay, the hint is by using differentiation property. property. So let's go through the whole procedure together. Okay, so we are going to calculate the differentiation of this given signal, right? Given signal. Okay, this is my scope, right? This is my scope. So positive scope, differentiate this one, we get something like this, right? Okay, constant A differentiate, we get zero. zero. So this is F and T, right? Oh. DFT, DT. So this is one time differentiation. Now, actually, you know this one's free transfer is sync, right? This one is also sync. You can use the property, go back, find the original signals, free transform. Okay, here in this example, in our textbook, it go one more step further. So I'm going to show you what did in our textbook. Okay, how about rectangular signals differentiation, right? Go up, so we have an impulse, we have impulse here. of differentiation from my original signal. Now it's very clear, right? For impulse signals, free transform, right? We have impulses, right? Impulses with time shift, time shift. Okay, so any problem, how can I get this one? This one. Now we go back, right? We go back. Go back to original signal. Omega for one position. Omega square, second time, second time. How about this one? This one will be impulse function with time shift free transform. So is my free transform j omega f omega uh, j omega square f omega
Okay. How about f omega? f omega times j omega square is this one. How about f omega will be the entire thing divided by j omega square, right? So let me write down. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't have enough space. So actually, those four items, right, repeat, but divided by j omega square. So in this problem, example 3.6.4, we use differentiation property and uh, existing pair to solve the given signals free transform. <coughs> Convolution property. Time domain convolution, Ft, convolution with h of t. We know convolution is a pretty complicated procedure, right? Uh, however, those two signals convolution in frequency domain, we have multiplication. So, which one will be f omega time h omega? So, time domain convolution, frequency multiplication. So, we call it time convolution property. What's in, what's a, if we have frequency domain convolution, time domain we have multiplication. So later, let me show a uh, sampling theorem. We are going to use this property, this property. And this one might be used to find a given signal has a system's outcome, outcome or output. about 10 properties, right? But in your table, you'll have around 15 to 16 properties. How can we calculate a given two signals, right? Two given signals, convolution. Here is definition. <laughs> convolution of two signals defined as one signal, then another one reflect and shift, shift, 
then the integral give me the convolution of give me the, the result. <coughs> so we talk about the properties first. Then we are going to use two signals to show how can we calculate the convolution. Okay, so uh, properties they have. Uh, Okay, cumulative F1 function is F2. The result will be the same. F2, F1. So if you change the two systems position, results should be the same, should be the same. number one, six number two, equivalent, equivalent. How can we use this property in our real life? So if your systems are linear systems, those two are not the same, they are equivalent. So results should be the same. Same result. So one example we can think about if I have a signal, right? If you are doing your signal design project where right, you are collecting signals from human body. Generally I'm going to have a high pass filter, right? Remove frequency I'm not interested. So for example, a noise from environment, right? Very high frequency. Uh, I have a high pass filter as my F1, right? This is F1. And most likely, I'm going to have another low pass filter. The cutoff filter generally pretty small, right? Very slow or very low, maybe around 0.01 hertz. So what does this one do? This one can remove the baseline drifting or very, very low frequency noise, you are not interested. So this is my F2. So in real implementation, I can do F1, F2, or F2, F1. The results should be the same, should be the same. So you can play with those two filters, and the results should be the same. Okay, here, this omega C determined by uh, your application, right? For if it's speech signal, we use 4K hertz, right? If it's ECG, EMG, will be different, will be different. So any problem for cumulative properties? So in your real life, you can really use this property in your new design. Okay, number two, we call it distributive, distributive. Okay, so we can view F1 as a, a signal, a signal pass, a big system with F2 plus F3 will be the same as F1 pass F2 plus F1 pass F3. So let me uh, block the picture for you. So this is my signal F1, right? F2 plus F3. Structure one and structure two, they are also equivalent. Equivalent. Maybe you have a pretty complicated system, right? So this system can be divided into several subsystems. Then we can use structure number two. You have all your subsystems lying together, right? So the signal will pass each branches simultaneously, right? same time, and we combine the results, the results 
should be the same as this one, as this one. So people also use this property a lot in our real design. Okay, I'm going to show you one example. <coughs> uh, so how can we use distributive property in real, uh, in real life? Uh, so right now, we know we use cell phone a lot, right? Cell phone provide uh, data, right? Uh, making phone calls, message, almost, right? Uh, many, many important things. So we know uh, there is one important technique used right now in your cell phone and in base station we call it, uh, So turbo coding make our throughput higher, make our data rate much higher. So this one is very good, however, very, very complicated, very complicated. So if I want to have one ask, right, finish all the tasks in this, in this job, I need a super powerful one. And that one may be even more expensive than a like cell phone, right? For example, I have, a, I need a processor, a $300, right? So what we do, okay, we divide the whole task into small tasks. So I have a big F, right? I have a cattle F. I have F2 plus F3 plus F6, right? I can divide my whole system into five subsystems. So for each individual one, we have a smaller, right, not so expensive, less powerful one to implement this task. So here I have my DSP number one, right, feature signal processor, processor one, my processor two. Processor three, processor four, four and uh, FPGA. So this is what people did right before to finish turbo coding by dividing this big system into five subsystems. So the price combined the all five components even lower than use a super big powerful one. So if your system is very complicated, right? You can always do that. Another benefit, not only maybe save, right, uh, reduce the cost, but if that's one branch wrong, you just fix this one or remove this one. You don't need to fix the entire thing. And sometimes by doing this, can make your speed even faster. Right, so we have simultaneous together. But however, uh, however, right, synchronization will be a problem. <coughs> So this is this triplicity. This so F1 function is F2 plus F3, exactly the same as F1 function is F2 plus F1 function is F3. Okay, any problem questions? Okay, the last we call it associative, associative. So F2, F3 combined together with F1, or F1, F2 combined together with F3, the results will be the same, will be the same. Okay, so we show three important uh, convolution properties. Then we talk about two special convolutions. Okay, any problem for this slide? Let's go to Okay, remember we talk about several special signals, right? If unit step function convolution with another signal, the result should be your signals integral from mass everyday to T. So unit step convolution with, a, uh, with uh, any signal, you get that signal's integral. Okay, this one, very, very important, very, very important. <coughs> so let's look at this one, then I'm going to explain it. Convolution with impulse function, right? So we have a signal convolution with 
impulse, we get the signal with a shift. With a shift. Oh, remember, in chapter two, we talk about impulse, right? Impulse. Remember this one? So a signal mixed with impulse into integration, we get a single point in your signal. So like extract or sample that single point. However, When we do convolution, we get entire signal, but with a shift, right? So this is case one, we extract this point. This is case two, the whole entire signal shift, shift. So the second one is very important. Why do we use it when we talk about something zero? Any further any questions? So, we add one more, right? We add one more thing to convolution, uh, to impulse points. We have uh, intuition, like scaling, uh, symmetry. This one is very important. <coughs> two signals. We divide the whole procedure into five steps. Okay. Step one actually you, you do nothing, right? F P change F tau, so we just change the variable from P to tau. Step two, for another signal. T to tau and uh, reflect, right? Reflect, so we call step two, reflect. Step three, shift. The new signal will shift it by T, by T. Then we mix the two signals, do integration. The integration gives us that single point. So come here, let me repeat this shifting integration, right? Shift integration. Many, many times we get the entire convolution of the two signals. Okay, the procedure is not really easy to understand here. Let me show you the, the figure. Then we go back to those five steps. So let's look at the, the figure. The much easier, uh, much easier to understand here. Okay, I have two signals, X and H. Both of them are rectangular. So step one, right? Step one, X T change to X tau. So Nothing change right in my figure. In my figure, this one will be reflect. So step two, reflect. So from here to here, right now it's minus one to one. So so h this is h minus tau. Step three, shift. Okay, it's moving on x axis. When it's moving, we are going to calculate x tau times h t minus tau. Calculate the integral. So next slide we show the unit, right? <coughs> okay, so step four, we have to calculate the two signals multiplication, do the integration, then we move, keep moving. Okay, at first, remember that this blue one, the x, x tau is fixed, the red one is moving, right? So at first it's moving, but no overlap. So the multiplication you need no overlap, right? When I do the intuition, no value. Now, H is into X. I'm going to stop have some overlap. And when it's moving forward, my overlap will be bigger and bigger. So my intuition become bigger and bigger, right? Decrease. Okay, after totally overlap, 
the retina is moving out. So my outlet becomes smaller and smaller. Finally, no outlet again. Again, so we have shift and uh, mix and inclusion. So in my mind, we can find right, I'm going to have increase to the highest value of that decrease. Right? So the convolution of two rectangle signal is increase, decrease. We have a triangle. Any problem? How can I get this one? Let me show the picture, right? It's much easier to understand. So five steps for calculating Okay, I'm just repeating. So signal one, the blue one, fix, right? The green one, I'm sorry, the red one, reflect, shift. Find the overlap, calculate the integral, then repeat the whole procedure. Shift again, mix, integral, shift, mix. So time to calculate convolution is really uh, complicated. Come to consume, right? Uh, that take many efforts. However, they have uh, a simple method. Right? In uh, three fifteen, you also learn uh, so convolution in time multiplication in frequency in frequency. So you don't have to calculate the convolution if you know free transform. You just need to find. The two points of free transform find the multiplication. So this is also linear system, LTI system, signal pass system. In time domain, log should be convolution. First, much easier, right? Multiplication. I remember there is one uh, problem in your homework. So similar thing, right? similar thing. Uh, one to another one, they'll, they'll ship. Try to find the overlap. Okay. We call it minus 3 dB bandwidth, minus 3 dB bandwidth. So look at here, I have two curves, right? The blue one and uh, the black one. The blue one is the real system, I'm interested. So here is the highest response of my system, right? And it's it drops, right? It drops. And it drops to a single point. This point, the power, no power, this point, the amplitude is 1 over square root of 2 of A. So power, square root of it will be half, right? Compared with the highest. This one corresponds to <coughs> W, we call it minus 3 to the band. So that means at this point, my frequency response power of my frequency response will drop to half of my highest, highest. So minus 3 dB from there. Okay, half, right? Uh, minus okay. dB, right? That be 10 times from this 10. Right, base 10, log 5, 0.5 is minus 3, right? Of minus one three something. 
So minus three dB is we also call it half power than this. My power is half, amplitude is 0.707. In terms in terms of disciple will be three minus three dB. So after that, actually, still we have something there, right? But the drop, the power will be dropped pretty fast. So minus three dB bandwidth is one most popular definition for the system's bandwidth. Okay. Any problems? Any questions? So like we mentioned, right? Later in chapter four, we have second definition for a system's bandwidth. Just remember, very, very, very important, right? If you want to use good bandwidth, you want to pay. Right? If you want to use free bandwidth, you have to make your technology really, really smart. I'm going to explain this one a little bit. So let me erase this part. Okay. <clears throat> this thoughtless transmission actually is our final goal, fundamental goal for connecting systems. We want our transmission distortionless means almost right N not very no very big changes so okay i have my transmitter side right Transmitter receiver in between will be the channel. So I send a signal into my system. It will be modulated by any many other procedures. Then the signal transmitted through the channel, received by a receiver. Let me do demodulation, right? Despreading, decoding, de uh, de interleaving, uh, equalization. Then we have the output. Distortion. This means 